All right, uh, welcome everyone. We are going to get started here in just one second. I want to do just a quick video and audio check just to make sure you can hear me. <laughs> okay, and you can see the screen, so I think we should be good to go. Okay, so now that we have done a couple of parts on technical analysis, we're going to move into a bit more of an advanced version of technical analysis, um, you know, but all within the realm of, of things that you can use uh, in a very practical manner. So we're not going to talk about anything esoteric and, um, you know, we're mostly going to talk about more, more ways in which you can use technical analysis in the U.S. stock market in a very systematic and repeatable manner that doesn't confuse you but leads to good results. In fact, that I think uh, really is you know, should be the goal of any market participant to, you know, get to a point where you have a repeatable process and, you know, you don't have to think about the market the, you know, all the time. You just kind of go in, you do your analysis and you execute a trade or, you know, you wait until the next trade sets up. So before we get into today's topic again it's going to be part three of technical analysis let me just give you again like we usually do a bit of a review of what we've talked about thus far we talked about the uh, main reasons why technical and why the u.s stock market is a, a, a good market to trade it has to do a lot of it with liquidity and transparency again you know a lot of stocks uh, in the u.s stock market uh, trade well 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 over 500,000 shares a day so Lots of liquidity, a lot of different market market players. Um, again, the market is is very confined by its trading hours, which I think is one of the attractions as well. And also, of course, a lot of the companies that are listed in the U.S. stock market are very large, uh, or at least respectable firms that are also uh, very clearly. Uh, sort of guarded by the authorities in terms of regulatory bodies and so on and so forth. And that really helps for an orderly trading market and, and uh, you know, so as not to come across too many surprises from a corporate front, you know, from an accounting fraud perspective and all sorts of stuff. Of course, you know, you can never completely rule those things out, but, uh, you know, there are a lot of checks and balances in place uh, to kind of, you know, keep those things from happening. Anyway, so... Again, we talked about the different sectors and the industries. Uh, we talked about you know, the reasons why the U.S. stock market is so good for, te for technical analysis. Um, and again, you know, this kind of gets us right to the point today. So the first two parts of the uh, technical analysis uh, webinars that we did, we discussed mostly, you know, sort of the basics. We talked about why technical analysis works so well on uh, U.S. stocks. Uh, we talked about, you know, the reasons behind that, mostly having to do with liquidity and the orderly flow of information. Like, for example, right now, coming into the fourth quarter of 2016 earnings reports, which are going to be reported here now in early 2017. And that's in a very orderly process as well. And, you know, I understand you have that in other markets as well, but what you have here in the in the U.S. stock market is uh, is for the most part a very diverse set of stocks that come out every single day during earnings season and report their numbers. And so there's a process to that. You know, you, people listen to the earnings reports and the analysts, you know, give either thumbs up or thumbs down, and then they wait for the market to react. So uh, one thing I would like to talk about today as well is you know this whole idea of trading stocks. Uh, through or after an earnings report and we touched on it a little bit last time but i want to talk about it a little bit more uh today especially because we now have a few companies that have already reported in uh, this earnings cycle so that's uh that's another thing we want to talk about today um again this should be a familiar slide for those of you that have uh, listened to the previous webinars uh, the different sectors and groups are also there to do, you know, for us to be able to um, to be able to to do various analysis. In fact, it's probably something I would like to do today as well, 
looked at sec look at sector and group analysis to give you a, sort of a high level idea of, of how to analyze the US stock market. We talked about it a little bit in terms of uh, in terms of sort of you know sector and group analysis and what it tells us about the market, but we haven't done any technical analysis on that just yet. So I'm hoping that's something that will be of interest to you as well. Um, I know it's I think it's you know um, very important to I think it's very important to, to, to do that. So um, let's see here. Let's go right into the bit here about technical analysis. We talked about uh, moving averages. We talked about you know the reason why I want to keep things simple in terms of technical analysis. And simple doesn't have to be doesn't have to mean it doesn't work. In fact, the the reality is that the, the more simple you keep things, the more the more repeatable your process becomes. And you guys will see this here as we talk about technical analysis here in part three. Um, just again as a quick reminder, if you are new uh, to this to this webinar series, what we're going to talk about here in terms of technical analysis doesn't just work for stocks, uh, but it also works in bonds and currencies. So IFX, which I know a lot of you uh, are trading. It works in commodities and it really works in all time frames as well. So whether you are a day trader or a swing trader or uh, a position trader, which is kind of similar to, to swing trading, it doesn't really matter which time frame you're focusing on. It really works in all the time frame. So that's just a little bit more a word about that. And we talked about moving averages, trend lines, um, and other technical formations. In fact, last time around, we talked, uh, we focused, uh, we focused a lot around around sort of these technical formations. If you remember last time we talked about, you know, these various bull flags and how to correctly draw trend lines and things of that nature. And now today I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to reintroduce or talk a little bit further about um, about multi time frame analysis, which I think is the key to the kingdom. And then we are going to talk about candlesticks and confluence zones as well. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do today. We'll go through it. We have about, uh, oh, let's call it 45 minutes right now still to, to go all over all that. And I think that'll be uh, very good. If you, have, if you have questions in the meantime, uh, please make sure you do ask them. Okay, so let's talk about multi time frame analysis and what does that really what does that really truly mean? Well, multi time frame analysis, when it comes to technical analysis, which is you know the way I would look at it, is all about getting you know getting some more insight or or getting more perspective, which is really the better term to use on different markets. So this is the S and P 500 exchange traded fund, the SPY. You can pull up that instrument and many many more uh, on the RoboForex platform. So I would highly suggest that you check that out. But for example here, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about here. And let's maybe just redraw these lines uh, to start from scratch so we don't uh, uh, look, so it's not too confusing. Uh, as a quick reminder, and so that you know the moving averages that we are using here for simplicity purposes, and again, they're used for reference points, are the 200 day moving average, which is in red, the 100 day moving average, which is in blue, and the 50 day moving average, which is in yellow. So um, what we did last time, and I think we've done it a couple of times, we, we drew some very clear lines of resistance. So let me just go back here and let's draw uh, a couple of lines here. This is the S&P 500. Now this is gonna be a bit of hindsight, but I have to give you that example so that we can look at future analysis as well. So you can see, to me, to my eyes, if I were to draw a line, it would look something like this, okay? That to me would be your line where that used to be, that used to be resistance. As you can see, that, see this line used to be resistance and now it has become support. It has become support when the S&P 500 bounced off of the support line back here in November of 2016 after the, or actually just a couple days before I believe the US election results. And so what we have here, and we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later, 
we already have a um, uh, we already have a, a confluence uh, support area here uh, that we we can talk about um, in just uh, in just a bit. And basically, what what, what happened here is that um, is that we had a breakaway gap. And you can see this in the daily chart. Now, what I want to introduce you today is the multi-time frame analysis. So keep this in mind here. Let's look at the weekly chart. And all we're doing now is we're simply going in and we're basically making each one of these bars, which are actually candlesticks, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. They are all um, they are all just you know weekly bars. So the weekly analysis allows us to get more perspective with it basically reduces the noise. Okay. So you can see that we had a bounce right into this confluence support area. Okay. And then we had follow through buying, which took place the week after. So we had a sell off week and then a strong bullish reversal week. Okay. And that bullish reversal week also actually, uh, you know, basically took the stock out of, this consolidation phase, which I would argue we could look at as a sort of bull flag pattern. Okay. So let's go back to the daily chart. And you know, what I always do, I always flip back and forth between these weekly charts and the daily charts uh, constantly to kind of see how they line up with each other. What they're telling you is, is one, you know, whether one chart is confirming the other and, um, and so on and so forth. So that's, that's a constant, uh, uh, sort of analysis that uh, that I do. Now, before we look further into this, um, ABC Trader wanted to look at OCN, which I do think we do, we did look at that last time, and we talked about this potential last time. We talked about the potential for this stock to do something. We didn't know what it was going to do. Remember, we talked about that it's in a consolidation phase. Now, I I would imagine I don't know, but I would imagine this company reported earnings. I would suppose. Okay, so now what you have is is a, a break to the downside. We're now at the next support area. Okay, so so I don't know what the what the news was. It doesn't really matter in my opinion, uh, you know, unless it was like a major lawsuit or something like that. But um, essentially, we talk about how this could be bullish, but you know, until it actually breaks higher, you know, it's not bullish. It's just consolidating. So that's also why personally you know, I would have not taken the trade like this because it just stuck in a range. So now you can see we broke to the downside and we're now at the next support area. The next support area here is this um, yellow 50 day moving average and the yellow day 50 day moving average um, is was has had been acting as support before. And uh, so, you know, maybe it's going to be support again. We're below it already a little bit, as you can see. So, um, so you know, in my opinion, at this point, you know, I, you have to look at the earnings calendar. And I don't know exactly when this company reported earnings. ABC is saying that there was a downgrade. So, you know, that's fine. If there's a downgrade, then this can happen for sure. I would now just be a little bit careful when the next, when the next, um, uh, when the next earnings date is. Okay, so I have no idea when they report earnings. I don't have the tool open right now that I, well, actually, I can have a quick look for you if you want. Let's have a look um, somewhere else here. I like to look at this. So it's OCN. Okay, so they are going to report earnings on March the 6th. So you still have some time. So in my opinion, at this point, you know, I'm not sure I would do a whole lot in the stock. Yes, it's dropped and, the, you know, all else being equal, the path of least resistance is probably lower, but you also have to keep in, take into consideration that we are going to have uh, earnings season, okay? And now, the, you know, this is, of course, a financial stock, awkward financial. So the banking stocks, a couple of them reported earnings today. Um, Bank of America reported today. And I believe Wells Fargo, and I don't even know if JP Morgan report earnings. I should know that. Um, but anyway, the point is, we're going to have many, many more earnings coming out in the next few weeks. So you you just have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more careful as to you know as in, in terms of the news calendar. But if you look at something like Wells Fargo and you know 
And um, oops, I just messed that up. Uh, as as well as um, Bank of America, they're actually making some pretty decent moves today, and I actually kind of like this this price action here. So you know, we, we we let's let's why don't we just do some some real time analysis here? Um, why don't we do some time analysis here? Uh, on this, uh, let's say Wells Fargo stock, and you can see that today Wells Fargo is having a pretty good move. It's it's actually rallying uh, after earnings. I'm assuming this uh, this is active. So what I'm seeing here, through the lens of a very straightforward technical analysis approach, is very simply, you know, what I consider to be a bull flag pattern. And this bull flag pattern looks something like this. Okay, I'm sure uh, anyone can see that. That that's not a, uh, shouldn't be uh, very difficult to see. But what you can see is that this bull flag pattern is not yet truly, not yet truly resolved to the upside. Let's first look at the weekly chart to gain some perspective. So we're going to go in here again. This I'm using the RoboForex platform. We're going to go in here and we're going to look at the weekly chart. So we're now we, what we did is we made each one of these bars. A weekly bar okay so now in my opinion today is a very bullish day you can see there's a bullish um, engulfing day which we'll talk about uh, actually why, why, why don't we talk about it right now this is not talking about candlestick and I'll actually let's let's hold on for a moment I'll, I'll talk about candlesticks and, and more specifically in a minute but since we're talking about multi time frame analysis you know to me this is a very bullish looking stock okay and so what you can see is that um, we this is not the weekly chart, mind you. We we had a very clear breakout after the election results. Okay, that's this. We broke higher, and now we're basically consolidating up here once again. And we haven't, in my opinion, we have not yet broken higher to the next move. Does that um does that make sense to you? I, I would I would love to get a little bit of, of feedback on that just to make sure that um that you can see this sort of multi time frame approach you know the usefulness of it so to my to me to my eyes this is the stock is constructively uh, positioned but i like to see a more meaningful bullish reversal both on the weekly and on the daily chart, chart so if we now go over to uh, the daily chart which is here you can see that you know we're marginally trying to break out we're just not quite it's just not to me um, it's just not strong enough yet. Um, you know what? There, there are various ways of looking at this. You know, I I would argue that today is an important day in this stock, but it's also a Friday. So to me, from a um, from a how should I say from a from a reward to risk perspective in terms of timing, I don't like to add. Or initiate a lot of new trades on a Friday. I would prefer to be a little bit more cautious. So, if we look at Wells Fargo, you know, I, I would I would assume that we might be able to get a, a just as good an opportunity to potentially buy this stock on Monday. Okay, so it's just because you don't. As a general rule, I don't necessarily like to buy something into a weekend unless I. Uh, unless I absolutely have to, so uh, that's just kind of um, that's just kind of the, the the main idea here. Okay, but I, I like the move, and you can see this the the, the bull flag pattern here is is very nice. Uh, we have the moving averages all pushing higher. We talk about these moving averages. Remember, we said that as a general theme, it's usually good to to only trade stocks. Uh, to the to the long side from a swing trading perspective unless you're trying to catch a bullish or bearish reversal if they're trading above their respective 50 and 100 day moving averages in this case you can see the 50 days in yellow and the 100 day is in blue okay so that's just a uh, a, a a very uh, simple uh, a very a very I should I shouldn't say simple in in, in a negative sense it just means a straight a straightforward rule that uh, that I think everyone can can use and and um and should be able to appreciate. So, uh, so that's that. So now let's go back and uh, just maybe do the same analysis on on shares of Bank of America. Again, they also reported earnings today. And if we now just take a step back and we make this a weekly chart, so I'm going to go in here again 
click on the D1 and I'm going to go down to one week. Okay. And you can see that this stock here, you know, had a very nice bullish move once it started breaking, breaking past this big resistance point here. And now it's, you know, really attempting very clearly to make another move higher. Okay. So again, I, I don't necessarily think today is the day when you have to chase that stock higher, but I do think that, um, I do think that this is a constructive looking chart. And again, we're looking at it both from a daily perspective as well as from a weekly perspective. And the, you know, they're giving us the both sig the same signal, but you can see here too, we're not really just yet quite breaking out of that, out of this range, right? So, you know, depending if or not, if whether you want to force a trade or not, you could you could arguably say that this has broken higher, depending how you draw the lines. But the reality is this entire consolidation phase is still very much in place. Okay, so I hope you guys can see that because um, uh, because it's very important not to, to chase something higher or lower unless it's actually made a, a directional move uh, out, of, out of a consolidation phase. So OCN was exactly one of those examples, and you know, I'm glad that... Uh, you brought this up before. We've talked about this uh, on Wednesday, and you can see we we you know we very very clearly said that you know yes this this stock arguably is constructively positioned, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it, you know that it has to go higher right away. The time frame, you know, that's the whole point about multi time frame analysis. If we look at the multi time frame, let's let's go back to the weekly chart here. So you can see that on the weekly chart, all right, we do have a, a constructive bottom, bottoming process taking place, but really the stock has not yet, you know, finished the bottoming process. You know, it, it is still trading below its 100 week moving average. That's that blue line. Um, it's trading above the, the 50 week, which is basically the 200 day moving average, but really it hasn't yet resolved it. As much as it's looking constructive, on the more daily chart, on the near-term chart, and the bigger picture here, it just isn't, it hasn't yet confirmed what it needs to confirm. And what it needs to confirm, in my opinion, is at least a break above the immediate term resistance or the near-term resistance here, which uh, it, through my eyes was probably somewhere closer up here in you know the $6 range, okay? So again, that's the power of multi-time frame analysis. And if we now, uh, you know, Go back to the S&P 500, and we apply some multi-time frame analysis here. You'll see, uh, you know, how powerful that is here as well. So you can see that the S&P 500, through sort of the longer-term lens, is clearly trading in a new uh, secular bull market. You know, and by secular, we mean these sort of you know 10 to 15-year ranges. And you can see that uh, the S&P 500 is very much trading in uh, in in this new bull market, as we we broke out of this bull market, out of this bear market, this was a market from the year 2000 all the way over to the year 2013, until the S and P 500 finally broke uh, above those uh, those previous highs that were so tricky. You know that the market really couldn't go higher. So now, if you look at this multi-year, uh, I guess this is I think this is even a monthly chart. Yeah, this is a monthly chart. So let's let's look at a weekly chart for a minute. Anyway, I mean, you, you get the same picture. Uh, the point is we are, you know, in a very well-defined uptrend. So let's go back to the monthly chart. So each bar right now is basically looking at uh, one month worth, worth of price action. Let me draw this line here once again. All right. And so you can see we are in a very well-defined uptrend. Uh, basically looks something like this. Okay. Okay. That is your, that is basically your uptrend since the 2009 lows in the S and P 500. And you can see nothing has really changed yet from a price action perspective, right? So we're looking at the monthly chart. Now you can see that we had very strong bullish reversals take place here. We can also highlight this using some horizontal analysis like this. 
Okay, you can see that this horizontal support lined up, matched, right? So this horizontal support matched with diagonal support on the monthly chart, right? And that's why it's so important that I, that's why I always advocate to use not only daily charts, but also uh, weekly charts and also monthly charts. And sometimes if you want to, uh, you know, look at a trade very near term, maybe you're looking for a trade to just hold for a few days, maybe just a couple days, then I always would advocate that it's very good to also look at intraday charts. So, you know, that's your one minute chart, your five minute chart, your 15 minute chart, those kind of kinds of things. Okay. So, um, but of course, it all depends on your time frame. So you can see how the monthly chart here is uh, is very is very powerful. Now uh, let's zoom in on the weekly chart and continue the analysis. And you can see that on a weekly chart, the S and P 500 uh, back here at the these were the lows of uh, just about one year ago. You can see on the weekly chart we actually broke below the this channel this 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 bit here. But we did hold, obviously, horizontal support. So that's, again, you would not have seen this on the, on the weekly chart. In the weekly chart, you would have thought that maybe this is quite bearish. But as you can see on the monthly chart before, uh, there was actually no, no real confirmation. And then finally, in the daily chart, just go into the daily chart, gets much choppier here. So again, obviously, horizontal support held. But you know it was quite scary looking for a time here. Uh, one year ago in January and February. So that's the that's the power of a of a multi time frame approach is you know being able to see things in my opinion uh, you know with with much more clarity and really what that what that allows you to do is become a better risk manager. Okay. So again, I, like I said before, I hope this makes uh, I hope this makes as much sense as I think it does. Uh, and so uh, with that having said, let's um, Let's let me delete some of these things here and let's move on and talk a little bit about candlesticks. Is anyone here using candlesticks for their analysis? Candlesticks are, in my opinion, the most important sort of uh, most important way of of um, of looking at a, at a market. I think I think you need to be able to understand what the stock market is telling you through the lens what, what what let me rephrase this i think it's important to understand what the stock market is telling you um about investor emotions and um, about investor psychology um at any given point um but through the lens of price action okay so yes, uh, price action is not the only thing. However, it is the only thing that pays you. Okay, I used to work. I used to work with a guy one time, and um, you know he was very analytical, and that's very good. And he had like, I don't know, I can't remember how many oscill. He had like, he must have had at least 10 different momentum oscillators he was looking at, you know, your stochastics and your RSI and all those kind of things. And he, he was, he, he wouldn't admit it to himself, but he was, he was constantly confused about what the stock market was actually going to do because he had so many signals that were usually kind of speaking against each other. So, you know, we call that analysis paralysis. There's so much analysis and so many signals, and they're all, you know, not in, not sort of agreeing with each other. That's ultimately what what happens is you don't take any trade, or you take too many trades just randomly. Okay. So his problem was that he he had all these indicators, but he forgot. He always forgot that the only thing that actually pays him, okay, is what the price does. A, a momentum oscillator or a trend line or all these things they don't actually make you money. Okay. The only thing that ultimately makes you money is the price. Okay. So, and people forget that. And, and so it's important to use other indicators. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not discounting that, but I, I, I do want to make sure people understand that, um, you know, the, the price is the only thing that ultimately 
will 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 either pay you or not pay you, right? So um, let's talk about candlesticks a little bit, and um, you know the best example here is right on the S and P 500. Let's just stick with this chart because it's a it's a hopefully a chart that uh, many of you have seen before, or you're at least familiar with the index itself. And um, you know when I look at a candlestick chart, I'm mostly concerned with what it's telling us about you know investor emotions so when we look at a candlestick i'm going to zoom in very closely and uh let's focus let's focus on um on this one here okay um and you know what we're looking at essentially when we're looking at a candlestick is that we, we have basically four reference points in any given day you know week you know five minute chart wh whatever your time frame is and um, the the four points are the the low. In this case, this is the daily chart, so we're talking about the daily low. Then you have a daily high, which was up here on this candle, and then you have the open, which was this lower end of the green bar, and the daily close, which is up here. So let me show you here, this candle here, just kind of show it a little bit better. You can see that there was uh, the, 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 the tails or the shadows, as we sometimes like to call them. That's these things or the legs, sometimes they're referred to as legs. These are quite long on this candle, but on this one here, you can see them a little bit, but they're barely there. Okay, but so we have the open of the day was here and then daily close was up here. So what's important to me is the relationship of the open to the close to the high to the low like that. Those four points, how they relate to one another is is uh, is always very important to me. I, that's what I want to um, that's what I want to gauge. Okay, now uh, by far the most powerful way for me to use these in this uh, this candlesticks is to look for extremities and emotions so extreme fear uh, extreme bullishness okay these are all or or extreme uh, extreme complacency okay which can also happen but let's look at what happened here this is a really good example so we have the s p 500 selling off for a number of weeks Ultimately, it came into this day, and you can see that the sellers, which had been in charge for some time, they were trying to push the market lower uh, all the way down here, and they succeeded, right? And you can see there was quite a bit of volume spike here as well, as well as a couple days prior. But you can see that the sellers failed to keep the market down here. In fact, they reversed it back higher, and then we had what I call follow-through buying, the next day and the day after and then we bounced a little bit and then we retested these lows but we never broke below them okay you can see that we never actually broke below them right and then same thing here this is what we call a doji candle this was actually uh you know an island reversal as we as we refer to in in the in the uh, world of technical analysis and and as far as um uh, yeah i guess technical analysis and generally speaking and so we had seller exhaustion one more time, uh, which coincided with those lows over here, and then follow through buying the very next day. So, yeah, I mean, you you can look at this as market makers. You know, that's I think I don't think that's an inaccurate way of looking at it. But you know, what I have learned over many years of doing this is that you know, if, if you just focus on the on the on on what the price action is telling you okay and you can look at vwap and all these things that you're mentioning here that's that's I, all of that is correct but i will tell you that if you if you don't focus so much on all these little intricacies that 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 you know that you're mentioning here which which are not which are which are important i'm not disagreeing you know they are important but if you just focus on what the price is telling you Okay, and the price here is telling you very clearly that the sellers are tired, especially once you've seen follow through buying here and here. And then here again, we retested these lows and the sellers were very tired. 
Yes, you could say the market maker did something in VVAP and all those things, which these are all intraday things, by the way. Okay, these are all day trading things that you're mentioning. And that's all good. But um, but basically, you know, the price will tell you what need what, what, what's taking place. The, the price will tell you if, through the lens of, of candlesticks, will tell you if something is dramatically oversold or over, overbought. And then basically, you, you can just do the opposite of that. So that's, I guess, at least that's the way uh, that I've learned to do it over the past 20 years. And, and that works very well. And you can look at the extremities and emotions, you know, same thing here, seller exhaustion, file through buying, and then we had a retest and, um, and so on and so forth. So the candlesticks are, to me, are very important. So let's look at another sort of series of candlesticks and we can look at it. We can look at, uh, you know, another way of using candlesticks is by just looking at the complacency, right? So we, we talked about that before. You can see the S&P 500. I, you, I don't know if you remember or if you followed this market very closely, but the S&P uh, last summer, so about, let's call it six months ago, was was very boring. Okay, In fact, a lot of markets were very boring. You know, uh, even in Europe, a lot of markets were, were, were very boring. We had this sort of trading range here that lasted from July all the way through into, into, I guess, early September. And it was unbelievably boring. And it really took a long time for the market to get more interesting. But these, this series of what we call doji candles, at least, you know, a lot of them were doji like candles, uh, you know, told us what we need to know, which is that the market was very, very boring. And, you know, buyers and sellers were basically in balance. There was no real ba imbalance. You know, the, there was, there was no real, um, you know, auction process taking place that um, uh, that was that was meaningful, right? And so people were just quite quite complacent. And so um, yeah, so that's that's another way of looking at these candlesticks, All right? So now if we take this all together, and you know, let's go through this maybe for another. 10, 15 minutes, and we start looking at when all things come together, you know, what the, what the power of an analysis that we can, we, the power of analysis is, is really quite dramatic. So let's, let's focus on a couple points that we've already focused on here in the S&P 500, and we can look at, at, uh, at other things as well. So you can see, for example, here, these, uh, this, there were some very well-defined support in this index. Okay, this could be a stock as well. This could be uh, an ETF, uh, another ETF for a different sector or whatever. And you can see that there's a lot of supports that we'd support once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And a very simple rule uh, of technical analysis is that the more often a support or resistance level gets gets tested, the the weaker it gets. Okay, And this is actually opposite to what a lot of people think. So in this case, you know, we had very strong a strong bullish reversals and, and support held. But in this case, you saw there was a lot of resistance that was tested many, many times and ultimately it broke, uh, it gave, and then we rallied higher. So what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that the topping processes or tops are, are a process. They take time, a lot of times. Not always, but a lot of times they take time. And you can see this here, you know, a topping process, then we have sell-off, Topping process that took some time, that is sell off, and you know then we rallied. But the the lows, the the at at the the lows or the the you know, lows of, of swings tend to be events. They tend to happen pretty quickly. Now doesn't mean that you know that they have to just take one day. But you can see you know here it was a one day thing. Uh, here was a one day thing, and then we retested it. Right, so the retest. Is something very important uh, that has to happen, in my opinion, for a more meaningful bottom, and and it just ha it happens a lot, right? Uh, not always, but it happens it happens quite often. So, uh, so so the confluence of things coming together is is quite dramatic, uh, so of importance. So let's talk about it. so we so here at these lows, let's talk about the most recent lows, maybe here just one year ago, we had horizontal supports, right, which. Uh, which basically coincided with, we don't have any, unfortunately we don't have any momentum oscillators on here. Let me see if I can uh, find a couple of these things here. Let's add, um, I like a stochastic is fine. Okay. So we had, 
at the lows here in January, February, like one year ago, we had horizontal supports, okay? Um, and you can see that with this coincided with, with two things. Number one, it coincided with strong uh, bullish reversal by the candlesticks, right? You can see the sellers were visibly exhausted. And then we had uh, extremities here in in the oversold readings of the uh, of the stochastics indicator, okay. And then when the stock here or the ETF in this case made a marginally mo higher low, the stochastic also made a higher low, and that's actually quite important. So what we had is this sort of you know rising, uh, sort of yeah, I guess a, a rise in the Looks something like this. Let me just try to draw this in. Oh, I guess I can't draw that there. Okay. Anyway, the point is, the point is that um, you can see there's a higher low here in momentum as well. So um, I think that's that's important to note. So all these things are coming together here. Okay. And I'm going to try to get rid of some of these things here. Let me see. Okay. That doesn't seem to work. Give me one second. Let's try to go to a different ETF. And so if you have questions and um, a stock tickers, specifically tickers you want to look at, maybe let's take some time and take a look at a couple and uh, see if we can find some that uh, we can apply some analysis on. Okay, looks like you had, a, we had one prepared there. That sounds good. Let me just have a look. I'm trying to get rid of this thing here which seems to be a little bit difficult oh god I'm making it worse <laughs> anyway um, we will figure this out let me uh, just give me one minute could have sworn I had a way of doing this before let me just quickly uh Try something here. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Let's do this as well. Okay, that's good enough. So um, let's look at a couple. So UVXY, and I'm familiar with that one. All right. So the issue, the issue with all, pretty much with all the tickers that that you're typing in here, um, in my personal opinion, is that they're very, very difficult to trade from a technical analysis perspective. So UV, UVXY, I, I just don't think. I, I don't know how you can even trade this. I've never met anyone that can make money in this. So what we're going to look at is something that's a little bit easier to understand. Let's see, MSTX, maybe that's um, an easier one. Yeah, so this is a little bit better. Now you're talking about a penny stock, though, okay? Penny stocks are very, very, very difficult to trade using technical analysis. Um, you know, I, can't, I really can't tell you much, unfortunately, on, on a penny stock either because penny stocks – you know they're not really going to trade on technicals. They're they're just too random. So I would prefer to to, to skip over these. Um, XGTI. Oops. Okay. Yeah, same deal. Penny stock, just very very difficult to trade from a technical analysis perspective. I think you know since we're trying to teach people, introduce people to. Valiant is better, so we can look at Valiant. All right, so let's look at Valiant, and basically what, I, what I'd like to focus on when we look at Valiant is just the, the big picture, first of all. And you can see that the stock is clearly stuck in, in a fairly decent range. You know, I think you've got, I think you've got earnings coming up pretty soon, and, um, you know, this stock has been under some pressure. There's plenty of, of news flow out there around the stock, so you know you really need to you need you need to see a clear catalyst for the stock to do something. It's it's a, it's a in my opinion it's a dangerous stock as well. So um, 
I would just be I would just be very careful trading these kind of stocks that are so heavily in, in the news, you know, which is why if, if we look at something like Amazon.com, you know, let's let's try to apply to some some technical analysis to something like Amazon.com. OK, and you can just see. Yeah, we'll look we'll look at NVIDIA. OK, so Amazon.com, you can see just applying some multi time from analysis. You can see, you know, this is a stock that trades very orderly. There's there's plenty of news flow. There's plenty of volume. So if we now look at the weekly chart first, OK, and we zoom in on it, you can see, you know, the stock is very nicely trending higher. It's got the 50 week moving average of support. And now, you know, it's rallying very nicely into earnings. We have earnings coming up uh, in the not too distant future. I like I like the way the momentum is, is coiling up here. So, uh, you know, this could indeed be, you know, quite, uh, quite meaningful to the upside. Now, let's let's talk about NVIDIA and NVIDIA is an interesting one. I actually have an indicator that I a proprietary indicator that I use. It's called the B2 reversal indicator. Um, that's available for for a number of platforms. So, like, for example, in NVIDIA, we had a really nice, um, a really nice sell signal on one of the uh, right here on this day here, because this was a strong bearish engulfing signal. And one of, I think it was on December 28th, if I remember correctly. So like I personally, what I did is I, I went in and I sold some out of the money call spreads for income. Uh, some people, uh, some of my clients and subscribers, they actually uh, purchased some puts. So. Uh, you know, this is a classic stock of, of, of overheating and, and, and this is not the kind of stock that you want to chase to the upside. You want to wait for the stock to come to you. OK, so uh, it was a great trend following stock in 2016. Uh, but this is now a stock that probably has to take a bit of a breather. Now, I know earnings are going to are, are going to come out pretty soon. Um, and again, very much like like Aquin Financial OCN before, you know, to me, this is a stock that is basically consolidating. You know, you can draw these lines in many different ways, but really, you know, it's now basically consolidating. So, you know, I'm, I was short and out of money calls spread to generate some income. Uh, I'm no longer in the trade personally in, in, um, in full disclosure. So uh, that's, uh, that's NVIDIA. Now, you know, Facebook is an interesting one, always, always is. Uh, we had very, very strong bullish reversal take place in Facebook. Again, we're applying our multi time frame analysis here. Okay, let's look at the weekly chart. Looks something like this. And you can see we had a very strong bullish reversal. In fact, I think actually a few weeks ago we talked about this when we first started this series of, uh, of webinars and we talked about that uh, the lack of the stock, you know, the stock being basically being stuck in a range. And now finally we had follow through buying take place. Well, that follow through buying, um, you know, that strong bullish weekly reversal, this is, these are now weekly charts so that each bar is one week. Okay. So you can see a very strong bullish week last week. So the, the first trading week of 2017. And uh, now this week we're seeing follow through buying. So in my opinion, this is now, uh, this is now probably, uh, this is now probably getting a little bit dicey because again, earnings are probably uh, coming in the not too distant future. And so, um, yeah, so I, I, I think, I think this is a stock that's going to probably end be, being very, um, acting very well again this year, or at least for the time being. Um, and you know, sure enough, we're, we're back towards the, towards the upper third or quarter or so of the uh, of this range as you can see so again let's apply some multi-time from analysis what we just learned in today's webinar which is number one uh, again multi-time from analysis using moving averages as well so you can see where Facebook bounced it bounced last week at the lower end of this channel it bounced off the 50 a weak moving average, which is this yellow line, which is also roughly the 200 day moving average. Uh, it gave a strong bullish reversal candle. We talked about candle six before, right? Uh, it bounced off of horizontal supports. And, um, and uh, you know, this is all very, very positive. So now the stock, you know, bearing any sudden bearish news should uh, likely continue to over the next few months, maybe or so, should continue to work to the upside, you know. But 
you know, this is a stock like that I, for example, was very reluctant to to uh, to buy in uh, in in you know basically in the second half of last year, or well, not the second half, but probably in the in the fall. So like autumn. So like even as of August, September, October, the stock just it just didn't look at, didn't look at interesting enough. And then finally. It started selling, giving us a bearish reversal here on the weekly chart, and also didn't look good on the bear on the on the daily chart. So we actually played it on the short side, and then it came down into the longer support. And now, sure enough, it's uh, it's it's back on the rise again. So uh, so yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I wanted to look at today, uh, folks. I hope I hope this uh, this made a lot of sense. I. Uh, I believe what we're going to do next time is we're going to focus a little bit more also on using momentum oscillators you know, like your stochastic and your MACD, which is your moving average convergence divergence indicators. And um, we will talk, uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll hopefully make it much more interactive again. So um, yeah, so a lot to look forward still in, in, uh, in this uh, webinar series. And um, I hope you come prepared with some questions. Next time, help help spread the word. Get as many people as possible in here. And, um, you know, the stock market is coming into a pretty interesting time here, the U.S. stock market with the uh, U.S. presidential election uh, having taken place and the new president will be sworn in uh, next week as well. So uh, lots of stuff happening here. And it uh, should, be, should be an interesting... Uh, should be an interesting time. Earnings season as well. Yep, earnings season has started this week. It is going to get much more interesting here next week as well. So anyway, well, thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.